Hi, um, I'm here again. My name is Chair, and um, I want to share with us uh, briefly tonight on um, the making of the disciples of Jesus Christ. What a disciple of Jesus um, should know and um, should learn, um, continuing from the series we had done in the past on the importance of understanding who a disciple is and understanding that we are disciples of Jesus. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 28, um, Jesus clearly said, um, go therefore, in the, uh, verse 19, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Praise God. So it's, it's clear that the assignment is to make disciples of nations, not nations as in Nigeria, you know, geographical uh, with geographical boundaries, that's a nation also, but nations as in people, groups of people, individuals, turn them into disciples of Jesus, preach the gospel to them and make them followers. Disciples means followers of Jesus, people that follow the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. There's a, a critical teaching I want us to look at this evening. I would call it a doctrine. And it is the issue of citizenship. The citizenship of a believer. The citizenship of a disciple of Jesus. Let's look at some of the things that Jesus said concerning himself. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 8. In verse 23. Jesus said... Let me, let me back up to verse 20, 20, 21. Then Jesus said to them again, I am going away and you will seek me and will die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot come. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he says, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. So Jesus was very, very clear. He knew exactly who he was and he knew where he came from and he knew he was not of this world. Hallelujah. You remember when um, during his, uh, when he was going to be crucified, when they took him to Pontius Pilate, Pontius asked him a question and Jesus' response was, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my disciples fight. But my kingdom is not of this world. I'm not interested in the Roman Empire. At that time, the Romans ruled Israel, ruled Jerusalem. I'm not interested in the Roman Empire. I'm not interested in the earthly empire. My kingdom is not an earthly kingdom. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were to be earthly, then my disciples would fight. It's not just my disciples that would fight. I would summon angels to come and fight. One angel, one angel would have shut down everything that both the Romans and the Jews were doing at the time. But God had another plan. Hallelujah. God had another plan. Let's look at another scripture in John chapter, um, chapter 17. Praise God. John 17 from verse 15. And let me read from verse 10, from verse 9. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. You and all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. 
Those whom you gave me, I have kept, and none of them is lost except the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I'll read that again. Because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Hallelujah. We are not of the world. Very important. Very critical. We are not citizens of this earth. We are not citizens of this world. We are citizens of the heavenly kingdom. We are citizens of heaven. We are citizens of Zion. We came from above. We were born from above. Jerusalem above is our mother. Our heritage, our root is from above. It's not of this world. I want to read a scripture. From the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. This is the heroes of faith. I want to trust the Lord that if this scripture, this chapter is to be written again and another Bible written again, that my name will be in Hebrews chapter 11. Praise God. I want you to desire that for yourself, that your name would be in Hebrews chapter 11. When they speak of men and women who through faith subdued kingdoms of this world, your name will be amongst them. Praise God. Verse 13, these all died in faith. Talking about the patriarchs, our fathers, those who lived and ran this race before us. But these all died in faith. In faith not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Praise God. Now, this is not just talking about cosmos. This is talking about the earth. They confessed by the life that they lived, they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. They know their homeland and it is that homeland, their focus is on that homeland. And they are on the earth with an assignment from the homeland. We are like ambassadors on the earth. In fact, the Bible calls us the ambassadors of Christ in the book of Corinthians. Paul calls us ambassadors of heaven, ambassadors of Christ. Now, an ambassador, an American ambassador in Nigeria does not see himself as a Nigerian. He knows he's an American. He's governed by the rules of America. He's governed by the laws of America. And his welfare, his welfare is administered, is sorted out, is taken care of by his home country. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is, this is very, very critical because I see a lot of believers who are held down by earthly lineage, held down by generational problems, generational curses, things that held their earthly fathers down, things that run in the bloodline of their um, earthly um, forefathers. And we seem to run helter-skelter or seem to accept these things as the way we are, seeing that it was in my father's life, it was in my grandfather's life, it was in my uncle's life, it was in my granduncle's life, and things like that. For a child of God, 
as a disciple of Jesus Christ, this is very critical information, very critical knowledge. You must acquaint yourself with it. You must feed yourself with it until you are persuaded. It is written in your blood that you are not of this world. Praise God. Let's look at another scripture. Um, Philippians chapter 3, verse 20. Let me back up to verse 17. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Kai, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. And whose glory is in their shame? Who set their mind on earthly things? Oh my God. So, a disciple of Jesus must not be earthly minded. Some people say, you're too heavenly minded and earthly useless. I don't know what that means. I really don't know what they mean by that. By being heavenly minded and earthly useless. <laughs> We are messengers from heaven sent to redeem people from the earth, sent to harvest people from the earth, to take them with us to heaven, to take them with us to eternity, to spend that eternity with Jesus and to rule and reign with Christ starting from this world into eternity. Praise God. Now, I know that as soon as I said rule and reign, the natural mind would think of political offices. That's not what I'm talking about. It could be a part of it, but that's not what I'm talking about. Talking about. I'm talking about ruling and reigning by Christ Jesus over this present age and over this present world and establishing the will, the purpose, and the plan of God over the lives of men on the earth. That is the job of a disciple of Jesus Christ. A disciple of Jesus Christ must understand that my assignment is to turn every man I meet to be a, become a heavenly being. So I cannot be earthly minded. If I am earthly minded, I will produce earthly minded people. Look at this. Who set their mind on earthly things? For our citizenship is in heaven. This is clear. Our citizenship is in heaven. I am a citizen of heaven. I'm not of this world. I'm a citizen of Zion. I'm a citizen of the new Jerusalem. I'm a citizen of the new world to come. I want to read one last scripture. You know, a critical part of the life of a disciple of Jesus Christ is the knowledge of the scriptures. I was chatting with a young man a few days ago and his parents are saved, but he's having, you know, his faith is shaky. And when I asked him, what happened to you? I want to know, how did you get to this point where um, you, 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 you believe in God, yet you don't believe in God, okay? You have wonderful, awesome, awesome parents who love the Lord. Your father is a saint. Your mother is a saint. What happened to you? And you know, this young man told me that part of his challenges you know, was the lack of understanding of understanding of the scriptures, marrying the scriptures, some of the confusions he met in the scriptures, and you know, not having anyone to untie them for him. So he just concluded that this whole thing it can't be real because it's not adding up. Every disciple of Jesus 
must be fully and thoroughly grounded in God's word. Because the question the next man is going to ask you might determine where he spends eternity. Praise God. First Peter chapter 1, I want to read from verse 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, to the pilgrims, sojourners, those who are on a journey, those who are passing through, we are passing through this earth. So because of that, your mind as a disciple is different. Now, when you are able to marry this truth, honestly, um, I want to say that all of your problems will be over. But that might sound, you know, unrealistic. It is real to me, but it might sound unrealistic. So let me say 50% of your challenges are over when you understand that your citizenship is not of this world. Your economic life is not of this world. Your social life is not of this world. Praise God. Your spiritual life is not of this world. Your economic life is not of this world. Your family life is not of this world. Every aspect of your life must be drawn from a template given to you from heaven through the word of God. Hallelujah. Now, this is the assignment of every preacher, the assignment of every minister of the gospel, the assignment of every believer who has been so raised to make disciples of all nations. I want to challenge you today to live the life of a disciple of Jesus Christ. Speak to others about Jesus and raise them. Raise them to become disciples like you. Let me do a quick recap. If I met someone today and I got the person born again, what is the very next thing I should do with that person? Get him filled with the Holy Spirit. Getting filled with the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in other tongues. Teach him to pray. Get him born again immediately. Set him on fastings immediately and prayers. Get him filled with the Holy Ghost. Train him to pray hours on end. Not two minutes prayer. Not Father, thank you. Your hand is upon us. Blessed be your Holy No. Take him on 30 minutes, one hour daily. Drill him to pray hours daily in other tongues and then begin to teach him the doctrines of Jesus Christ and the doctrine of the apostles and the foundational doctrines of Christ found in Hebrews chapter 6. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you.